Hello everyone, welcome to my video channel. Today we are going to cover regarding a snapping hip syndrome or coxa saltans. I will start with an introduction. The types of snapping hip that can be divided into an external coxa saltans, internal coxa saltans or internal snapping hip, intraarticular snapping hip, how to diagnose a coxa saltans by history and physical examination and lastly regarding the management of coxa saltans. The disclaimer is the same in all my videos. Thank you. Now let's begin. As an introduction, coxa saltans or snapping hip is a palpable or auditory snapping with movement of the hip joint that may or may not be associated with pain. Or coxa saltans is an audible snap or click noise in or around the hip joint region when it is in motion. It occur more in female than the male. Typically, it is an overuse injury with a higher occurrence in activities that involve repetitive hip flexion and extension. Example, in activities such as dancing, soccer, gymnastic and running. What are the causes or etiology of Cosa Saltans? It can be due to three main causes. One, extra-articular, either it is an external extra-articular or an internal extra-articular or intra-articular causes. The most common cause is external extra-articular variety which involve either posterior iliotibial band or anterior aspect of the gluteus maximus as they travel over the greater trochanter during the hip flexion and extension or internal and external rotation. For external extra-articular variety, again, the thickened portion of the posterior iliotibial band or anterior gluteus gluteus maximus tendons snap over the greater trochanter causing a catching or giving away sensation and inflammation of the trochanteric bursa that will elicit pain. Due to the distinct anatomic location and often a visible snapping, coxa saltans externa is most common on and often easier to diagnose. You must remember, this external extra-articular variety is one of the cause of greater trochanteric pain syndrome. The differential diagnosis include a greater trochanteric bursitis and strains or tendopathy of the hip. This picture shows an external snapping hip syndrome that occurs when the gluteus maximus tendon or the iliotibial band catch on the greater trochanter during the flexion. For an internal snapping syndrome, coxa saltans interna originally attributed to snapping of the iliopsoas tendon over the iliopectinal eminence of the pelvis. Other mechanisms that have been proposed include accessory iliopsoas tendon slips, iliopsoas snapping over a ridge at the lesser trochanter, snapping of the iliofemoral ligament over the femoral head, and subluxation of the long head of biceps at the ischium. Snapping at the anterior inferior iliac spine, I A I I S. This picture depicts the drawing of anterior anatomy. On the left hand side, illustrate the muscle belly of the iliacus and swast major which form the conjoined iliac swast tendon. The right side shows a bony prominence that may facilitate the snapping of the iliac swast tendon during the hip movement. Most commonly, it likely involves a snapping of the iliac swast tendon 
over the iliopectinal eminence or the femoral head. The liopsos tendon can also snap over a total hip arthroplasty and may be the cause of pain after total hip arthroplasty in up to 4.5% of patients. This figure is quoted from the Bitrix S et al. 2001. This may be related to prominence or malposition of the acetabular component. The picture shows an internal snapping hip syndrome that occurs when the ellipsoas tendon catches on the femoral head or iliopectinal eminence during the hip flexion. Okay everyone, next. Lastly, regarding the intraarticular cause of coxa saltans or the intraarticular snapping hip can be due to acetabular labral tears around 80% of the intraarticular snapping hip cases. This is this figure is quoted from Yamamoto et al 2005. Ligamentum teres tears, injuries to the articular cartilage Loose bodies from osteochondral or chondral fragments or conditions such as synovial chondromatosis, subtle instability of the joint. How to diagnose a snapping hip syndrome? It is by history and physical examination. By history, number one, coxa saltans external. The patient described a snapping or sensation that the hip dislocates. Number two, for internal snapping, patient described as snapping or getting stuck or locking and there is an audible component to the snapping. Number three, intraarticular pathology. There is an intermittent clicking or catching present. Clinically, an abducted and externally rotated gait may indicate a capsular laxity or instability. Weakness of the gluteus medius usually associated with coxa saltans internal. During physical examination, palpation around the entire hip joint can give clue. Assess the range of movement and the far deal. Flexion, adduction. Sorry, flexion, adduction, internal rotation or impingement. Tests can be used to assess for labral or intraarticular pathology. Dynamic testing from FADIR, flexion, abduction, external rotation to FADIR, flexion, adduction, internal rotation will often elicit snapping of the ellipsoas tendon. If the snapping is palpable over the anterior hip, this shows or favors a coxa saltans internal. Thomas test positive will indicate a swath contracture. Patient in lateral position and over test is used to evaluate iliotibial tightness. Active flexion of the hip followed by a passive extension and abduction can reproduce the snapping over the greater trochanter. For radiographic evaluation of coxa saltans, number one, the plane radiograph. There will be an evidence of femoral acetabular impeachment, FAI, and if cam deformity is large anteriorly, the lipsoas can snap over the femoral head. My advice that there is a video earlier regarding a femoral acetabular impeachment, you are welcome to view the video. Number two, MRI is rarely specific for involvement of the ellipsoas, but it will reveal an indirect evidence of snapping with inflammation of the ellipsoas besar or ellipsoas muscle. This picture depicts the Plain pelvic X-ray that shows a cam impeachment. Number three, ellipsoas bosography. It is done to confirm the diagnosis of internal snapping hip. 
as the bursa is filled with contrast under fluoroscopy, the tendon can be visualized flipping back and forth. The symptoms of the snapping are able to be reproduced. Number 4. Atrasonography It is used to visualize the dynamic motion of the lipsos tendon. The advantage of ultrasound is that it is non-invasive but is operator dependent. Treatment of snapping his hip is A. Conservative therapy. As a mainstay of treatment, majority of patients has a benign asymptomatic snapping of an infrequent basis. If the snapping becomes symptomatic, start with physical therapy evaluation to identify the source of the muscle tightness. This tightness can be due to applying a stretch to a muscle which is too short or attempting to lengthen a muscle which is too active. If the muscle is too short, the intervention is to increase the muscle length through passive and active stretching. If the problem is that due to excessive muscle activation, the management is directed at modifying neuromuscular control to allow a muscle lengthening while still maintaining eccentric control. Rest, ice and anti-inflammatory is helpful to reduce the cause by inflammation of the basal tissue. Occasionally, injection of the hydrocortisone into the basal tissue will provide symptomatic relief. For B, a surgical treatment, failed conservative treatment is rare. I repeat, is rare. The goal of surgery is to relax the tendon to eliminate the snapping. This can be done by fractional lengthening of the tendon or a complete release of the tendinous portion. In coxa sultans external, a various types of lengthening procedures have been described including a Z-shaped release, former Z lengthening, a cross-shaped release and release of the gluteus maximus tendon insertion to the femur. All techniques can be performed either both openly or arthroscopically. Yay, we have reached to the end of the video. See you in the next one. Take care and bye.